Uh, Ali, the hard stuff's over. Let's get mm-hmm. into the chat, mate. We're stoked for you to join us. Uh, how are you traveling? Yeah, pretty good, <laughs> mate. Pretty good, actually. I'm a bit tired. Um, I've recently just started doing stand-up again. So I'm doing the arduous process of uh, writing new material, going to open mic nights and uh, not letting anyone see it. Yeah. Because it's, uh, it's quite a daunting prospect. I think anyone, any comedian will tell you that when you're writing new stuff, you want to do it with as minimal risk as possible. So mm. you go to these dive bars, you just say your stuff and hopefully you get a laugh and then you kind of know what to keep in your act and what to throw out. Yeah. Well, Caden and I have both actually done open mic nights ourselves. Have you really? Once upon yeah. a time, aspiring comedians. Caden <laughs> on debut. You, I think it was quite literally fell off the stage. <laughs> were yes. you really cut or like were you just? Uh, no, I was okay um, in terms of morale. So I did this little like movement on stage. <laughs> I got my shoe caught into the carpet and went to the front row. That would have got a massive laugh, surely. It went dead silent. Oh. The laugh <laughs> happened where I got back up on stage and went, how's the commitment? And then everyone sort of <laughs> yeah, released that's the a, tension. Yeah, that's that's the relief. Good recovery. When did you realise you were funny? Do you remember the moment? Oh, man. Like, I've always kind of been the class clown, as long as I can remember, man. It's kind of been a second nature to me. Like, as I said earlier, I was an only child. So to break the ice and make mates, when we go on family holidays, it's my mum, my dad, and me. And I'd be that weird <laughs> bloke hanging out by the water slide, being like, G'day, mate, how are you? You know what I mean? I know exactly <laughs> you, what you mean. Yeah, do you want to, do you want to hang out, mate? You know what I mean? <laughs> what if I beat his budgie smugglers? Like, what are you talking about, yeah. mate? Like, yeah, mate, let's just go play <laughs> On the tennis court, mate. You want to go out there, mate? So I just make mates that way. Yeah. I'm um, not sure there would have been much success with that friendship making technique. Yeah. Well, actually, then I realized like humor was a great way of breaking down barriers and, and making mates. So in class, like I just, I really used to act up all the time because I'd just do anything for a laugh. And so like I was always notorious as being the class clown. I was always in trouble. Yeah. Always getting kicked out of class. Remarkable. I didn't get expelled really. Some of the stuff <laughs> I got up to. So yeah, that's sort of when I realized I was like, I love doing this. And mm. I think, yeah, I think. As soon as I got my first laugh, never looked back. Is this your most serious crack at stand up? Because you've been thereabouts with stand up for years and years, but I think I heard you talk recently about like this is maybe the biggest crack you're having at it. Well, yeah, it, um, I, I took a long hiatus from stand up. Like, there's a lot of guys out there that um, I started doing stand up comedy with who are really crunching it in stand up mm, now because mm. they just never stopped. Yep. Um, and I always think of that old saying like hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm not saying that I'm more talented than these guys, but I'm just saying that like, it always is the way, like if mm. someone's just working on their craft for ages, yeah. they just get unbelievable. It doesn't matter what it is or what medium. And I, I gave away stand up for a good five years just because, um, I think when things were starting to happen for me, I sort of self sabotaged myself a bit. Yeah. I got in my own head and, and gave it away. And um, I've only just recently picked up the microphone and got back out there because, mate, I got the worst performance anxiety you could ever imagine. Right. Yeah, that's yeah. crazy. Like my name would be called out. I'd duck out the back door and just wouldn't turn up to gigs. And I kept like sabotaging myself until I realized I didn't enjoy stand up. Yep. And to be completely honest with you, it's probably something that I'm best suited for mm. in terms of my skill set that I've built up, but something that I kind of resent. But I I see it as a gateway to other things. Yeah. You know, so I'm doing stand up at the moment. Don't particularly enjoy it, but I see it as a gateway to do the things that I really enjoy. 100%. Yeah. It's so hard. Mm. It is so hard. And it's crazy because, like, I get super anxious and I second guess myself on everything. Like, yeah. I'll be editing a video and I'll be like, this absolutely sucks. No one likes this. Or we'll come out of a podcast and Roger will go, that went well. And I went, oh, did it? Um, but stand up in particular is, is super, super difficult. Um, so, how have you started to overcome that sort of uh, anxiety around performing? Yeah, well, um, I actually, I can't really talk about it too much right now. I'd love to chat more about it, but I filmed a TV show in Sydney recently. It will air pretty soon. So yeah, huge. that'll be good. Um, and I'm looking forward to that getting out there and I can talk more about that very soon. But um, basically part of the reason why I did that show was to overcome my fear. And I read a book that like sort of changed my whole mindset. You mentioned earlier that I'm looking pretty ominous and quite lean at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason for that is I read a book by David Goggins. I don't know if yeah, you're Stay right. hard. Yeah. Stay, stay hard. hard. Um, become comfortable being uncomfortable. So <laughs> that's what we say. As, as you know, like my bag is impersonations. So mm. I sort of thought of it as an impersonation of someone who's not afraid. Right. And so like that. a lot of people have been seeing me when I get on stage at the moment and they're like, man, you look so confident. You look mm. so comfortable. And you're like, man, you have no idea how uncomfortable I am. Yeah. But I'm getting on stage and I look really confident. I look really like passionate about what I'm doing, but I'm not at all. But it's just kind of a persona that I'm putting on on top of the other personas that I put on. Uh, Elliot, you're known for your impressions. Um, 
is it okay if we get a couple? Oh, yeah, of course, mate. Of um, course. So we're going to chuck a couple of scenarios. <laughs> <laughs> at you. Really improv. Whose line is it anyway, Sol? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> just for our uh, yeah, entertainment. Yeah. This isn't going on the pod. This is just us. Um, yeah. So we're going to chuck a couple of scenarios at you and just to see if some of the impressions work with them. So we're hoping we could hear Bruce McAvaney <laughs> talk about pre-game coverage of Connor Rogers' senior debut. So he's literally never played seniors. He's a reserves footballer. I've won three coaches' awards in the two. So we want to hear Bruce just pre-game talking about the excitement of Connor Rogers uh, debuting for the Banyol Maybe Bears. I should just interview him. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yes, Bruce McAvaney coming at you right now live. And uh, Connor, I want you to talk us through the nerves. I mean, you've been playing football for a little while, haven't you? And you're such a whippet out there, such an endurance runner, two-way running midfielder. I've seen you in the guts. Oh, you're just so delicious the way you give that ball off. I just want to gobble up your nutsack. I really do. Oh, you're so delicious. And I really, really want to lick your face. But before I do that, I'd like to hear from you. Uh, <laughs> Bruce, I've never been so excited for a game in my life. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Never been so excited for a game in my life that oh. I'm staring right oh. here at you oh. now, mate. Three years in the twos, finally in the ones, but no mem- moment in football with Tom oh sitting God. here opposite you right now. Jeez. Oh, yes, thank you so much. <laughs> and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you and your football exploits moving forward. Oh, thank you, Bruce. <laughs> that, uh, was that, was, that was crazy. I don't know if we can top it. We'll give yeah. it a go, though. Um <clears throat> So Carlton play Collingwood in round mm-hmm. 23. Carlton mm-hmm. have been in the eight for the first time in 10 years all season. But if they lose the next two games, they are out of finals. And they're versing Collingwood, their rival. We want to hear Conor McGregor uh, <laughs> as a Carlton supporter walking in and getting heckled by some Collingwood fans and, and how that would go oh, down. That's <laughs> I wish I had my son. Is my son in my pocket? Uh, what, what is going on? <laughs> it is notorious Conor McGregor. Uh, we, we hate those. Uh, those, uh, those. Can, can I swear on this podcast? Yeah. I hate those and boys fans. <laughs> you know, they're, they're nothing but a little bitch. You know, we'd, we'd slap them in the face, but they got no teeth to begin with. <laughs> you know, they're, they're not, not, not but a bunch of bumbling booking but fools. <laughs> so, you know, w- what's going to happen is, is if they don't know to make the fucking eight, I'm going to slap all these mother funny good boy supporters' faces and kick their bodies on the lifeless bodies on the canvas. Uh, <laughs> so we, good. We may have lost our contract with Spotify, but we've gained uh, a million belly laughs along the way. All right, the last one. Sorry to put you through this, oh, Elliot, but this up. is the last one. Um, the newsreader that you do is very, very funny. <laughs> So Goes All Right has literally just been cancelled for some real outrageous accusations that have come out. And this is just on the news from the newsreader. All right. Okay. Um, let me have a quick <laughs> take. Take it. a second. Yeah. 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 Compose yourself. I uh, just wanted you to give me a rating quickly out of, so who we got in, in the lead, Brucey Mack or Conor Bru- McGregor? Uh, Brucey Mack's in the lead. Yeah. I think so. That, that was, I think, think uh, Brucey's Brucey more brand for this, for this show. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Goes All Right, just been cancelled. Breaking news. Yeah. Breaking news, the Goes All Right podcast has been cancelled featuring Caden McDonald. This newsreader <laughs> believes that he's been embezzling money from his co-host. <laughs> his co-host had no idea and he had this to say. If you embezzle any more money from me, <laughs> mate, I'm going to kick your teeth so far down your throat you'll be shitting them for breakfast. Jeez, it's really hard for the podcast to come back from that. Yeah. Clint carried away. No, I knew. I don't know. I, I was surprised you got embezzled out. Yeah, 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 yeah I don't have any money. You yeah. embezzled all six dollars. I don't know about that, mate. You got the chain. You got yeah. the gold chain on. <laughs> it's Two dollars shop. Very, very sharp. Mate, that's Al- worth more than me golf. <laughs> <laughs> Elliot, this has been amazing. Yeah. Uh, we were so pumped to have you stop by. Um, we really appreciate you stopping by, and good luck for everything in the future, mate. No, thanks, guys. I really appreciate you having me on the podcast.